the forming a euro storming a euro norming a euro performing model of group development was first proposed by Bruce Tuckman in 1965, who maintained that these phases are all necessary and inevitable in order for the team to grow, to face up to challenges, to tackle problems, to find solutions, to plan work, and to deliver results. This model has become the basis for subsequent models. Teaming model, forming, in the first stage of team building, the forming of the team takes place. The individual's behavior is driven by a desire to be accepted by the others, and avoid controversy or conflict. Serious issues and feelings are avoided, and people focus on being busy with routines, such as team organization, who does what, when to meet each other, etc. Individuals are also gathering information and impressions a euro about each other, and about the scope of the task and how to approach it. This is a comfortable stage to be in, but the avoidance of conflict means that not much actually gets done. The team meets and learns about the opportunities and challenges, and then agrees on goals and begins to tackle the tasks. Team members tend to behave quite independently. They may be motivated but are usually relatively uninformed of the issues and objectives of the team. Team members are usually on their best behavior but very focused on themselves. Mature team members begin to model appropriate behavior even at this early phase. The forming stage of any team is important because the members of the team get to know one another, exchange some personal information, and make new friends. This is also a good opportunity to see how each member of the team works as an individual and how they respond to pressure. Storming In the storming stage, enough initial trust has been developed between team members that they start to feel comfortable expressing discontent and challenging others' opinions. This stage is necessary to the growth of the team. It can be contentious, unpleasant and even painful to members of the team who were averse to conflict. Tolerance of each team member and their differences should be emphasized. Without tolerance and patience the team will fail. This phase can become destructive to the team and will lower motivation if allowed to get out of control. Some teams will never develop past this stage. Supervisors of the team during this phase may be more accessible, but tend to remain directive in their guidance of decision-making and professional behavior. The team members will therefore resolve their differences and members will be able to participate with one another more comfortably. The ideal is that they will not feel that they are being judged, and will therefore share their opinions and views. Normally tension, struggle and sometimes arguments occur. This stage can also be upsetting. Norming, the team manages to have one goal and come to a mutual plan for the team at this stage. Some may have to give up their own ideas and agree with others to make the team function. In this stage, all team members take the responsibility and have the ambition to work for the success of the team's goals. The danger here is that members may be so focused on preventing conflict that they are reluctant to share controversial ideas. Performing, it is possible for some teams to reach the performing stage. These high-performing teams can function as a unit as they find ways to get the job done smoothly and effectively without inappropriate conflict or the need for external supervision. By this time, they are motivated and knowledgeable. The team members are now competent, autonomous and able to handle the decision-making process without supervision. Dissent is expected and allowed as long as it is channeled through means acceptable to the team. Supervisors of the team during this phase are almost always participating. The team will make most of the necessary decisions. Even the most high-performing teams will revert to earlier stages in certain circumstances. Many long-standing teams go through these cycles many times as they react to changing circumstances. For example, a change in leadership may cause the team to revert to storming as the new people challenge the existing norms and dynamics of the team. Further developments, adjourning, transforming and mourning, in 1977, Tuckman, jointly with Mary Ann Jensen, added a fifth stage to the four stages, adjourning, that involves completing the task and breaking up the team. Norming and renorming, Timothy Biggs suggested that an additional stage be added of norming after forming and renaming the traditional norming stage renorming. 
This addition is designed to reflect that there is a period after forming where the performance of a team gradually improves and the interference of a leader content with that level of performance will prevent a team progressing through the storming stage to true performance. This puts the emphasis back on the team and leader as the storming stage must be actively engaged in order to succeed a year or two many diplomats or peacemakers especially in a leadership role may prevent the team from reaching their full potential. Rickards and Mudger proposed a similar extension to the Tuckerman model when a group breaks out of its norms through a process of creative problem solving. John Fairhurst TPA model, Alistair A.K. White together with his colleague, John Fairhurst, examined Tuckerman's development sequence when developing the White Fairhurst TPA model. They simplify the sequence and group the forming storming norming stages together as the transforming phase, which they equate with the initial performance level. This is then followed by a performing phase that leads to a new performance level which they call the reforming phase. Their work was developed further by White in his essay From Comfort Zone to Performance Management in which he demonstrates the linkage between Tuckerman's work with that of Colin Carnell's coping cycle, and the comfort zone theory. See also, group development, group dynamics, group narcissism, high performance teams, references. Further reading, Tuckerman, Bruce. Developmental Sequence in Small Groups. Psychological Bulletin 63, 384 a Euro 99 DOI, 10.1037 per hour 0022100. PMIDA 14314073. Retrieved November 10, 2008. Reprinted with permission in Group Facilitation, Spring 2001 Inches A, White, Alistair A.K. From Comfort Zone to Performance Management 2009 White and McLean Publishing ISBN 978-2-930583-01-3-1, Blanchard, Ken and Paris Icaru, Eunice, The One-Minute Manager Builds High-Performing Teams, William Morrow, 2009.